Stan Jabalisco here uh, with a continuation of our discussion about inductive reactants and how to make calculations involving inductive reactants. This is all um, derives from my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. You'll find extensive information about reactants and impedance and all of those mathematical things in this book. In fact, this book goes into some pretty heavy-duty detail about all of that. The current edition as I make this video is the fifth edition, but you'll find this information in any edition of this book dating all the way back to the early 1990s. When the first book came out, they've always had food on the cover of these books. Uh, the very first one had a hamburger or a cheeseburger or something, and they called it the hamburger book. Anyway, it, I've, sometimes the, a book's cover really can make a big difference. I, I always like that. But anyway, here once again is the formula for inductive reactants in terms of frequency and inductance. If you know the frequency in Hertz and the inductance in Henry's, then you multiply by 2 pi, that's roughly 6.28, times the frequency in Hertz times the inductance in Henry's will give you the inductive reactance in ohms. Similarly, this formula will also work if you use megahertz for frequency and micro Henry's for inductance. Now let's Let's flip that uh, previous problem inside out. The previous uh, video on this topic involved figuring out the inductive reactants uh, based on the frequency and the inductance. Now suppose, though, that you're, you're involved with a situation where you uh, need a certain amount of inductive reactants. Let's just suppose for the moment that we want to have 100 ohms. I'm ignoring the imaginary number aspect of all of this here because it really isn't necessary. Let's suppose that we want 100 ohms and its inductive reactances are positive. So we want 100 ohms, positive 100 ohms of inductive reactants. Suppose that we have a frequency of 10 megahertz. What is the inductance that we will need in order to get 100 ohms of inductive reactance at 10 megahertz? Well, the way that we do that is we want to rearrange this formula using just a little bit of simple algebra so that we get L in terms of everything else. And we can just divide by 2 pi f on both sides of this equation and swap the sides and we will get L in microhenries equals 1, pardon me, X sub L divided by 2 pi F, or F is in megahertz. So we have 10 there, and we have 100 up here. So L that we want here equals 100 divided by 2 pi times 10 megahertz equals 100 divided by, now's the time that we bring our calculator into the scenario, 3.14159. Times 2 equals 6.28318 times 10 equals 62.8318. That is our inductance in microhenries. All right. Well, let's just for the sake of argument get a little more accuracy here. Let's say that we are at 10.0 megahertz. 10.0. Give ourselves an extra 
significant figures so we can get a little bit better handle on all of this. All we need to do now is divide 100 by 62.8318 gives us 1.591 and some more but we would round that off to three significant figures 1.59 microhenries. That's a pretty small value of inductance. You wouldn't need very many turns even in an air core coil to get that kind of inductance. In fact, it would be so small that you bring anything near it, it might get influenced by magnetic coupling from the external objects. Just a little practical aside there, but that's how you do that. You just take uh, this formula and you manipulate it with some algebra. You probably learned as early as eighth grade or thereabouts. Nothing very complicated. 1.59 microhenry. So, that's a more commonly encountered problem than actually determining the reactants when you know the frequency and the inductance. It's more common that you might want to find the, uh, the inductance when you know the when you know the frequency and the reactants. We can also, let's just go here and say x sub l equals 2 pi f l. Let's suppose that we want 100 ohms again of inductive reactants. Let's suppose that we have an inductor whose value is 10.0 microhenries. Then what we have here is 100 equals 2 pi f times 10. We want to know the frequency in megahertz at which this 10 microhenry inductor will give us an inductive reactance of 100 ohms. Well, all we need to do here is divide each side of this equation by 2 pi L. So F equals X sub L over 2 pi times L. Well, here we have... I think we've got room on this page to do that. I'll make the numbers red just to give it a little bit better visibility. 100 divided by 6.28318. I think I've got that number memorized now. 2 pi, 6.28318 times the inductance. Well, it's going to come out the same, uh, same number as we had before, 100 over 62. 8318. Let's just double check that again. You know, there's nothing more maddening than making mistakes in calculations, particularly when uh, the tax authorities are involved or something like that. Then they point it out to you and they bug you about it. Well, here, you, you probably wouldn't find out until you plugged the component into your circuit and it didn't work or it blew out or it transmitted on an illegal frequency or something. 1.59 megahertz. That's the frequency at which a 10 microhenry inductor will give you 100 ohms of inductive reactance. So more often you're going to want to determine, determine quantities like frequency or inductance based on a known reactance rather than figuring out the reactance based on known frequency and inductance. So, with that, I'll close out this little presentation. Remind you once again, for a thorough discussion of all of this, I recommend this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. And it really goes into some heavy-duty 
detail. It's in part two, having to do with alternating current. And I remember particularly the heaviest mathematics starts in chapter 15. This is pretty highfalutin stuff, but it's, it's nothing you can't handle if you have a good high school education. You just have to, you know, like my physics professor said in college, one of my physics professors, he said, sometimes you just got to take some glue, put it on the seat of your pants, and then sit down in a chair. Make it contact cement so that when you try to get up from the chair, you can't get up. You're forced to sit there and study. Sometimes just good old study habits works better than any other alternative I've ever found. Old fuddy-duddy here from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Author of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics saying, So long until next time.